I am a property owner, 34 male, with a string of houses in my name in our hometown. This has been due to years of hard work, careful investments and sacrifices made along the way. Just to give context, I come from a modest family. My parents were both blue collar workers and labored tirelessly to provide a comfortable life for me and my siblings. They always dreamed of owning their own house one day, but it was beyond their reach. It was their upbringing that ignited my ambition and fueled my determination to build a better life for myself and my family one day. I met my wife during our college years. My wife shared similar experiences in her family, raised by a single mother who worked multiple jobs to make ends meet. She learned the significance of financial prudence and resourcefulness. We both wanted to overcome financial struggles one day and create a stable life for our children in the future. My wife and I tirelessly bought and flipped houses over the years. We saved every penny and made careful investments that eventually led to our ownership of several properties. Each property represented years of hard work, countless sacrifices and a shared dream between us. Today, I'm a father to two wonderful kids, a son and a daughter. Our properties are not just a source of income, but a symbol of our dedication to securing a future for our children. Little did I know that my life would soon take an unexpected twist thanks to an entitled woman named Emily, 40 female, who has been one of my tenants for a few years. She resides in a comfortable three bedroom house that I carefully saved up and purchased years ago before I got married to my wife. The property is located in a prime location in the city and is in close proximity to her daughter's high school. Emily was a single mother as her husband had unexpectedly abandoned her after their daughter was born. When I became aware of her circumstances, I offered her a subsidized rent to enable her to move in. Though I knew I would lose out on money, I wanted her and her daughter to be able to afford to live there. Over the years, I have never increased the rent and it has remained the same. Emily had been a reliable tenant over the years and paid her rent on time. We had developed a casual landlord-tenant relationship over time and sometimes kept in touch when she needed my help around the house. Her daughter was a high school senior and was preparing to apply for college. Three months ago, Emily informed me that her daughter had been accepted into a prestigious out-of-state university, which was a remarkable achievement for any high school graduate. However, this university was also very expensive and unfortunately, her scholarship didn't even cover 10% of her fees. I knew the financial obstacles of higher education and had my reservations about how they would manage it. One day, Emily asked to meet me. Thinking that it had something to do with the renovation required around the house, I agreed without much hesitation. We sat down in the living room of the house where she started by saying that she really appreciated the fact that I had been generous with her when it came to rent. She continued to tell me that she really wanted her daughter Lily to attend her dream university, but after crunching the numbers, including tuition, housing and other expenses, she realized that it was too much for her to handle alone. She had even reached out to financial aid, looked into scholarships and had taken up a part-time job after her full-time one, but it was still not enough. I nodded my head solemnly in understanding, thinking maybe she was going to ask me if she could delay paying the rent for a month, which would have been understandable. Instead, Emily had a staggering request for me that left me dumbfounded. She asked me if I could sell the property that she was living in. I looked at her inquisitively as she continued to explain that the property I owned and had rented out to her would fetch good money, which would help her fund her daughter's college education. Are you serious? I responded, a mix of astonishment and disbelief. You want me to sell my property to pay for your daughter's college tuition? Emily's eyes pleaded with me as she insisted that it was her only hope to secure her daughter's future. 
She mentioned that she had already had the entire property appraised and was confident that it could cover her daughter's entire college fees. I asked her if she had lost her mind because there was no way that I was going to sell my property for her daughter to go to a high-end university. I told her that this house meant something to me and I wasn't going to sell my property just like that. Emily insisted again telling me that I could loan the money and her daughter would pay me back once she graduated. Although I knew the importance of a college education, I was not going to accept her outrageous request. Hearing her plead made it clear that she was determined to find a way to fund her daughter's dreams, even if it meant making an outlandish proposition to a stranger. I calmly explained to Emily that the property was a significant part of my livelihood and I couldn't simply part with it. The burden of her daughter's tuition shouldn't fall on my shoulders. I told her that if she couldn't afford to send her daughter to the university, she could ask her family members for help or look into finding a more affordable option for her daughter. Despite my efforts to make her see reason, Emily continued to press the issue, asserting that I was the only one who could help and it wasn't a big deal to sell my property and give her the money. I realized that this was going nowhere. I left the property after asking Emily to not approach me regarding this ever again. I requested her to realize how outrageous she sounded and that she should find another way. I thought she would realize her mistake eventually. But over the next few weeks, Emily didn't give up. As Emily's daughter was inching closer to her college journey, the situation was becoming increasingly more and more unbearable. Emily, despite my denial, kept pleading with me every day to sell my property as soon as I could and even stop paying her rent in protest. Our once amicable relationship had soured. The tension between us grew as Emily remained steadfast in her belief that the property I owned was the solution to her financial woes. She was convinced that my refusal was selfish and that it was putting her daughter's future in jeopardy. On the other hand, I was losing out on money when she refused to pay her rent in protest. I warned her that I would take this to court because we had an ironclad agreement, but she refused to comply and it became increasingly clear that her demands had no end. The turning point came when Emily started involving others in our dispute. She started to approach her friends and the neighbors around my property, painting me as an unsympathetic landlord who refused to help a young girl realize her dreams. She told them that I was very wealthy, but I refused to help her out by loaning her the money. Given her status as a single mother who struggled to make ends meet, her story garnered sympathy from those she confided in. To amplify her cause, Emily took to social media and wrote a Facebook post, placing the blame for her daughter's inability to attend college squarely on my shoulders. Soon, the rumors started to circulate in our neighborhood. People sympathized with her plight and assumed that I was indeed in a position to help, but was knowingly not helping. I couldn't help but feel like an outsider in my own community. My wife finally decided to reach out to Emily to address the escalating conflict. With the tension in the neighborhood mounting, she felt that direct communication might be a path towards resolution. Emily, however, wasn't in the mood for a calm discussion. She immediately launched into a tirade about how I, as the landlord, had the means to sell the property which she believed was the only way to secure her daughter's future. Despite my wife's earnest attempts to reason, Emily's conviction remained unshaken. She asserted that we had the means to fund her daughter's college education and that we were being selfish. The conversation continued in a repetitive loop, with Emily repeatedly pushing my wife to convince me to agree to her demands. Her post, which had painted me as an unsympathetic and wealthy landlord who was refusing to help a young girl achieve her dreams, 
had a noticeable impact on the neighbors and the local community. Some neighbors who had previously been on friendly terms with us started to view us with skepticism. They began to believe that I indeed had the means to alleviate her daughter's financial burdens, but that I was knowingly refusing to do so out of selfishness. Others who were aware of my upbringing, hard work, and the reality of my situation shared my perspective and were just as appalled by Emily's audacious demand for me to foot the bill. They reminded me that I needed to protect my property and maintain the hard-earned legacy I had built. The community became more and more divided every day with some sympathy being directed towards Emily. Despite the mounting pressure, I stood my ground, resolute in my decision to protect my property. I had invested years of hard work and sacrifice to secure it, and it was not something I was going to part with simply. Meanwhile, Emily continued to fuel the flames, accusing me of lacking empathy and exploiting living in my property rent-free. Her social media posts became increasingly vocal, sharing stories of her daughter's determination and the countless sacrifices she had made to prepare for college. As a result, the debate escalated from a private disagreement to a public discourse. The weight of the allegations started affecting my family also. My kids began to experience bullying at school, with their classmates parroting the false claims they had heard from social media about me. It was heartbreaking to witness the distress this situation caused them. It was then I decided that it was time to take action. I had kept quiet thinking that Emily would eventually stop, but now that my children were being affected, it was time to set the record straight and defend my integrity. I reached out to a lawyer who specialized in property disputes and tenant-landlord conflicts. We immediately drafted a cease and desist letter to, to put an end to Emily's defamatory actions and protect my standing within the community. My lawyer informed me that the cease and desist letter was the first step in our legal battle and if Emily didn't back down, we would take it all the way to court. When Emily received the letter, she was understandably surprised. She attempted to reach out to me by phone, but I chose not to answer her calls. So she sent me a text message expressing her desire to talk to me and clear this out before things could go too far. She told me that this was all just a huge misunderstanding and that she and I could talk this out. I replied back stating my intention to take her to court. I told her to brace herself and enjoy it because she was going to regret ever trying to mess with me. I know this is going to be an uphill fight because this woman has been relentless in insisting that I should pay for her daughter's tuition and ruining our family reputation, both in the community as well as online. My lawyer is currently preparing for the case. In case it goes to trial when she doesn't back down, outlining all the false accusations and the harm she has caused us in the last few months. When some of my relatives found out I was taking her to court, they suggested that I should give her a chance to sort out the issue since she is a single mother and is trying to do what is best for her child. So Reddit, am I the a-hole for refusing to sell my property to pay the entitled mother her daughter's college fees and instead dragging her to court? Update one. Emily has responded to our legal action with a letter of her own filled with threats and more defamation. She has accused me of charging a uh, high rent, despite knowing her financial situation, which according to her made it impossible for her to save up for her daughter's education. I can't believe how far she is going to stoop down and lie just to get what she wants. Her accusations are baseless and it is frustrating to see her play the victim card when I had already provided her with subsidized rent. It is clear she's trying to manipulate the situation in her favor and I am not about to let that happen. It is clear that Emily is not going to back down without a fight. My lawyer, Matthew, has assured me that we have a strong case as her accusations are baseless but has asked me to be prepared as the legal process is going to be long and draining. 
I can't help but think about how this situation has escalated so quickly. It was never my intention to end up in a courtroom, especially with someone who had been a tenant on my property. But sometimes you have to stand your ground and protect what's rightfully yours. Emily might have her reasons, but I can't allow her to pressure me into selling my property. My family's future is at stake and I am determined to see this through no matter how challenging it would be. I will update you next when the legal proceedings begin. Update 2. Since my last update, the legal proceedings have officially begun. The anticipation leading up to the court date had been excruciating and the courtroom was charged with tension as both parties presented their arguments and evidence. Emily, flanked by her attorney, portrayed herself as a struggling mother determined to secure her daughter's future. Her attorney painted a vivid picture of financial hardships, emphasizing how my property had been the last lifeline for her daughter's dreams of attending the prestigious out-of-state university. Emily's testimony was laced with emotions, her eyes welling up with tears, as she described the sacrifices she had made as a single mother, the long hours she worked, and her unwavering commitment to her daughter's success. She talked about her relentless job searches and numerous applications for scholarships and financial aid, painting herself as a mother who had left no stone unturned. Throughout the proceedings, Emily's attorney relentlessly painted me as a wealthy, unsympathetic landlord who prioritized profits over a young girl's dreams by charging her with high rent. They implied that I had been aware of Emily's financial struggles yet continued to exploit her situation. But the most astonishing twist in the story came when Emily introduced a witness who was a family friend. We were shocked when this friend claimed to have witnessed a conversation between Emily and me where I allegedly promised to sell the property to finance her daughter's college education. I sat in disbelief as this blatant falsehood was presented in the courtroom. My attorney, Matthew, vehemently challenged this claim, inserting that no such conversation had ever taken place. He decided to take a more methodical approach to disprove this witness's claim. First, my attorney carefully cross-examined the family friend who had testified about the alleged conversation between me and Emily. He posed a series of detailed questions aimed at establishing the credibility of the witness's memory. Matthew asked about the date, time, and location of the supposed conversation, seeking to elicit inconsistencies or gaps in the recollection of events. In response, the family friend struggled to provide consistent details and could not produce any concrete evidence, such as text messages or emails, to support their claims. Their testimony became increasingly shaky under the scrutiny of the cross-examination. To further undermine the credibility of Emily's case, Matthew presented evidence that directly contradicted the claim by introducing records of text messages and emails exchanged between Emily and me during the time period when the alleged promise was said to have been made. These messages clearly show that the subject of selling the property to fund her daughter's education had never been discussed and Emily was the only one who was forcing me to sell my property to loan her the money. Additionally, we had a neighbor who lived adjacent to Emily's property testify that Emily had been paying less rent than all the other renters in the area. My lawyer pulled up receipts from other tenants residing in the neighborhood to prove the same. Matthew went on to argue that the absence of my written or electronic communication regarding this supposed promise that Emily claims, coupled with the neighbor's testimony, casts doubt on the family friend's account and hence cannot be held as concrete evidence. We then focused on providing that Emily had intentionally gone to great lengths to slander my reputation on social media, which in turn had resulted in the bullying of my children. My attorney presented a comprehensive record of Emily's social media posts and messages where she had accused me of being an 
unsympathetic and heartless landlord who refused to support her daughter's dreams. These posts were filled with emotional appeals and outright falsehoods designed to gain sympathy and support from the community. We highlighted that these posts were intentionally crafted to create a narrative that painted her as a struggling mother doing everything in her power to secure her daughter's future, when in reality she was emotionally blackmailing me to sell my property. Matthew then introduced screenshots of social media comments and direct messages from individuals who had engaged with Emily's posts. Some of these individuals were part of the local community and had formed a negative opinion of me based on the false information presented by Emily. These comments ranged from expressions of sympathy for her plight to outright accusations that I was an unfeeling landlord exploiting her situation. In addition to the social media evidence, we presented witness testimonies from my children who had seen my children experience bullying at their school due to Emily's social media posts. They described how their classmates had echoed the false claims they had read on social media about their father, leading to name calling and harassment. My attorney went on to argue that there was a direct connection between Emily's false accusations on social media and the bullying my children had endured. The intentionally misleading narrative she had crafted had not only damaged my reputation, but had also directly affected my family's well-being. This presentation of evidence effectively showed how Emily's actions on social media led to real life consequences for my children. As the legal proceedings continue, I am confident that justice will be served. The evidence presented so far has shed light on the truth and exposed the false claims made against me. I believe that the court will see through the manipulation and ensure a fair outcome in this case. Update 3. We won! The past month has been a grueling experience due to the legal proceedings. It has been like a roller coaster ride with unexpected twists and turns. My lawyer continued to present evidence and testimonies which made it increasingly clear that Emily's claims were baseless. Her attempt to manipulate the situation by introducing a family friend who falsely testified about a promise I had never made fell apart under scrutiny. The lack of concrete evidence and inconsistencies in the witness's account cast doubt on the validity of their claims. After a thorough examination of all the evidence and testimonies, the judge finally announced the verdict and ruled in my favor. This came as a huge relief to me and I was grateful that the judge had seen through all the baseless claims. Emily was found guilty of defamation and was ordered to pay damages for the harm she had caused to my reputation, starting with paying the rent for the previous months and additional fines. A restraining order was also issued by the judge preventing Emily from making any further defamatory statements about me or my family. This ruling successfully validated my actions and my right to protect my property. As the legal battle concluded, I watched Emily sitting beside her lawyer looking defeated. I turned to look at her daughter Lily and couldn't shake off the thought that her dreams had been compromised by her mother's sense of entitlement. This nightmare was finally coming to an end with justice being served. It was a lesson for everyone on the importance of defending oneself and not letting someone else's audacious demands shake our core beliefs. I can now move forward with a renewed sense of self-assurance and the knowledge that my house and our livelihood are secure. I would like to thank everyone who has supported me in this journey so far. The mental pressure and struggles my family and I went through were immense. But ultimately, truth prevailed. Update 4 It has been six months since my last update. Following my courtroom victory, the restraining order has effectively silenced Emily and the damages she had to pay for defamation provided some level of consolation for the harm done to my reputation. Emily and her daughter had to move out after I gave them the eviction notice. While their circumstances remained challenging, I knew they were no longer my responsibility. 
I did feel a twinge of sympathy for her daughter's lost educational opportunities, but the reality was that her mother's audacious request had put their family in a difficult situation. Emily was also forced to take down her defamatory social media posts as part of the court's ruling, and everyone quickly found out the extent of her lies. The last I heard about them was when her daughter Lily reached out to me with an apology out of nowhere. Lily had always been a great kid and I had watched her grow up, but when her mother started falsely alleging me, I cut off contact with them. I was surprised that she wanted to get in touch with me after her mother publicly lost the case. Her message was filled with genuine remorse for the way her mother had behaved and the consequences that had befallen her family as a result. She expressed gratitude for our patience and understanding during the ordeal, recognizing that her mother's actions had caused harm to both our families. She also shared that they had relocated to a more affordable area and that she had decided to attend the local college to pursue her education. She informed me that she had spoken with her mother after the legal proceedings had ended and had asked her to back off, stating that she was determined to secure her own future without making any audacious demands. I felt sympathy for what she had to go through at such an early age because of her entitled mother's false claims. I told her that everyone deserves a second chance and it was admirable that she was taking control of her own destiny. I wished her the best of luck with her studies and assured her that the past was behind us. Now that Emily and her daughter no longer live on our property, our life has settled into a new normal. The weight of the false accusations and the bullying our children faced earlier has been lifted. We took action by reaching out to our children's school and addressing the bullying they had gone through. The community has since rallied around us, reaffirming our belief in the importance of standing up for the truth. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.